Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing a deck profile here for Nordics. Now this deck is definitely long awaited. I've definitely been mentioning this particular deck for a while now. So uh, with that being said, I'm excited to actually show you this particular build. Now I did have to proxy two particular cards just because I still don't have them. And that's kind of what put me off from actually putting on our deck profile for you guys to actually see mainly because I was missing two of the cards, uh, two of the newer cards that is, and because of that, um, yeah, I just wanted to have a fully complete deck to show, but it's been long enough, and I just gotta show you guys uh, my particular build here. Um, obviously, I could only play this with my mates, as they're the only ones who would really let me use proxies, and aside from that, I could only play it online, so yeah with that being said this here is my build on nordics so hope you guys are looking forward to it so starting off we're going to be playing two copies of the gold facts definitely not as amazing as it used to be because we are not so much into a synchro era now as before however you do still see a few decks out there playing synchros uh one being virtual worlds so with that being said gold facts is actually starting to become a little bit better again not as good as it used to be back when it first came out but good enough that it's actually viable to play at least two copies of now one of the cards that has definitely impressed me a lot is uh tang yosnia uh this is an amazing card uh, basically, as long as one of your monsters is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can just special summon this card out onto the field, which is pretty amazing, you know, um, definitely just allowing you to always have something out on the board, and uh, with that being an additional normal sum or an additional monster out on your board, you could essentially go into your synchro plays a lot easily. Next up, I'm only playing two copies of Tangrisnia. The issue of this particular card is that it has to be destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard for you to actually get your two tokens, so I'm only playing the one copy. But I do like a bit of variety for this particular deck to allow me to potentially go for uh, some synchro plays here. But next up, I'm playing three of Alvis, the Nordic Alpha. This card is essentially uh, one of the more newer cards. It's not necessarily a new card because it came out back in Soul Fusion, but it is still a really great card that was much needed for this particular deck to allow it to potentially do a lot more for the actual deck itself. Uh, so yeah, this card is definitely a really amazing card and makes this deck work out so much better. Now as for the other alphas, we're going to be playing here two copies of Deverg. Uh, it's not too bad, just getting the extra summon is definitely well worth it. We're also playing here the one copy of Mara, allowing you to use materials from your hand is definitely also really nice. And we also have here Losaf, uh, essentially allowing you to generate more cards and I think that's really the main focus here is to try and get out more cards onto the board or um, managing your resources enough to, for you to allow to go into your bigger monsters. And finally we're playing the one copy of uh, Swartov. Uh, this is definitely a really nice card as well, just uh, getting a card from your graveyard to your hand is still worth it. Uh, otherwise, it could actually just be used in uh, other variations as well, which I'll get to later on. That purpose being mainly with the uh, Valkyrie, very nice card. Uh, just essentially allowing you to get out enough cards to pretty much go for your Nordic God. It's a one card combo, technically. You do have to discard two cards, but hey, it's kind of worth it, right? So uh, with that being said, uh, this card, yeah, it pretty much goes into Odin. I think that's good enough, really. Uh, but I'm also playing here two copies of Venatus. Pretty much can just become any of the other Nordic monsters, so it has a bit more variety there. Very nice. Uh, we're playing one Mimia. Uh, I wanted to play more of it, but I think one copy is enough. You just need it in the graveyard, and you can essentially just do stuff. Uh, and I'm playing one tier as well, just because it's a level 4, and I think level 4s are really nice, just because uh, they really do make up the levels to allow you to go for your big synchro plays. Alright, so here's the new cards that I didn't actually uh, manage to get, and as you can see, they're both proxies. Uh, these two cards are definitely really amazing. Um, they both essentially get you more resources. This one allows you to special summon uh, a Nordic monster from your hand, and then also target a Nordic in your graveyard and add it to your hand. I mean, that's so good. 
But at the same time, this one here allows you to special summon itself as long as you have an Azer or Nordic monster on the board. And then if this card is summoned in any way, then you could essentially just add a Nordic Relic from your deck to your hand. So these cards are really good, allowing you to pretty much generate more resources. And I think resource management is something that is kind of overlooked. Most people focus on drawing, but to add specific cards you actually need to your hand might just be a lot more powerful. So with that being said, this is definitely uh, much needed for the deck itself. Doesn't necessarily bring it to a competitive level, no, far from it. But it definitely does allow it to stand some sort of chance, allowing you to at least make a few plays uh, before you potentially lose. Alright, so onto spells. We're going to be playing here the one Nordic Relic. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's a really good card. Uh, Allowing you to summon out Nordic monster from your deck is already just really good. Uh, so yeah, it's just a really amazing card, one of the newer ones, and I only have one copy. I would add in a second copy if I could, and I would easily take out a Nordic Light. So I'm adding this in uh, just because it's nice for protection. It's not too bad there as well. Uh, I'm also playing one March towards Ragnarok, and I'm playing the one Nordic Relic Dropnir. Dropnir kind of makes sense because it is a Nordic Relic, so it could be added to your hand, very nice. But March Towards Ragnarok is something that I just wanted to test out. I feel like the protection is something that is uh, quite nice given how many cards I'm actually dealing with now in this particular format. But of course, this is protection mainly from other spells and traps, so that's kind of why I'm only playing one copy of it. Kind of just testing out uh, and seeing how things actually turn out for the deck. As for spells, we're playing basic cards that essentially have AoE effects. You're bringing out a bunch of big monsters onto the board. So you want to clear out your opponent's board as much as possible. And with these big monsters, you're just attacking your opponents directly onto their life points. And uh, it's going to be hard to actually recover from that. I mean, you essentially just need two or three attacks to win the game, really. You know, so to have these cards here, AoE cards, are definitely well worth it. Now as for trap cards, I'm playing a lot, so we're playing one Laverton, definitely really nice card. Uh, this card is just uh, amazing to be honest, um, a lot of cards really just focus on disrupting other players now, just by popping their cards really, and uh, Laverton allows you to kind of return the favour and your opponent can't respond to this card, so definitely really amazing. Um, and it's a Nordic Relic so you can actually add it to your hand as well easily. Uh, but Nordic Relic, uh, Gungnir, also a really amazing card. Um, again, allows for a bit more disruption as well, but at the same time, it's a Nordic Relic, so it's just really good. Um, we're going to keep up with this theme here of Nordic Relics, just because they're really searchable. This one allows you to double your uh, attack of your actual opponent, of your monster, uh, so that's really nice. And doing it during the damage step as well makes it really hard to respond to. And I'm gonna end things off here with the two Solemn Authority um, because these cards are just something I'm testing out. I wouldn't necessarily play it if I was trying to be competitive, but in this case, this deck is obviously a deck purely for fun. I'm not trying to make this deck competitive. I'm trying to make this uh, viable for a more casual format. So with that being said, Solemn Authority is something that I like to just uh, splash in just for a bit of its own specific protection in some sort of way. And surprisingly, if you are taking on some more competitive decks, there are a lot of cards that actually do target. So to actually use this to prevent targeting, I mean, it's well worth it. The final three traps we're playing is just the Gleipnir, uh, essentially just allowing you to add your Nordic monsters from your deck to your hand. Again, just being able to search out your deck is well worth it. Although you had to wait one turn, you're just straight up allowing you to add any Nordic from your deck to your hand. I mean, it's a fantastic card. Waiting the one turn, not a big deal because uh, you do have other cards that allow you to kind of already go about your resources. This is more so kind of like the nice follow-up plan and your opponent generally doesn't really bother about it. Otherwise, if they do have to worry about something, you could always just set this. It's a bluff. If your opponent tries to destroy this, you're going to plus anyway. So really no harm. 
So on to the extra deck, we're going to be playing three copies here of our uh, Gulveg. Uh, Gulveg is a very interesting card, it's a link one so it's really easy to go into but you could essentially just allow yourself to produce enough monsters onto your board to allow you to go for your synchro summon. So it's the card that was really made incredibly well to allow this deck to kind of sustain itself in this particular era of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, not necessarily the formats, but just within this era, it gives the deck some playability, and that's just wonderful. I'm also going to be playing here two copies of Odin, two copies of Thor, uh, Loki, sorry, and two copies of Thor. So yeah, these are the Nordic God ratios that I'm playing. Uh, I feel like they work in this particular format really incredibly well. Uh, they're easy to go into now because in the past Thor was the easiest to go into um, but to be able to go into Odin and Loki as well uh, with them also having unique effects uh, definitely quite nice so yeah I definitely like having all three of these cards um, to be able to go into any of them uh, with easy access given how much this deck has actually evolved. But of course I still want variety for this deck so I'm playing the one uh, GMF mech uh, let's see, uh, final Sigma, and I'm also playing here the Magma as well. I uh, can't really read the names because it was a bit challenging there, uh, since it was kind of like, uh, glared off by the two, three layers of sleeves that I actually have over this. Um, but yeah, like, these two cards, absolutely, uh, great options to actually go into with your Nordic Monsters, so... Uh, yeah, just wanted to have a slight bit of variety uh, for my cards uh, because sometimes you could actually exceed 10, sometimes you could be just below 10, so to have these two available is uh, fantastic. But I'm also going to be playing a few like toolbox cards, so Castell and number 41 Burguska are uh, just really nice. As long as you have level 4s, you could easily just go into this uh, quite easily. Uh, so it's definitely fantastic. And I'm playing here the two Nightmares uh, just because they really help out for this particular deck. Uh, if I could actually go into Unicorn, then it's not really worth it, is it? Because you're requiring three monsters as opposed to just two monsters. Cerberus and Phoenix does the job. Unicorn, it does something, but it consumes too many resources. And I felt that it wasn't really worth it in this particular build. Uh, given that it is quite difficult to put out monsters onto the board already and by then you should easily be able to go into your synchros which is a bit more ideal in this case but yeah that was essentially it for this particular deck profile so I do hope you guys actually enjoyed this uh, thanks for joining me today uh, definitely leave me your thoughts as to what you thought about this particular build and what changes you would actually make about it but with that being said, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'll see you all next time.